All right, so back on my series about buying used video cards and video cards in 2020, uh, we're gonna be talking about this one, this one in particular. Now, if you watched my last video, I had three other video cards, one that had a mining BIOS on it, had no fan, which actually I have right over here. So pay $10 for this one. And then there's this one. This one was only $50 that I paid for on eBay. I verified both these video cards work. They have no issues with them. Um, this one needs a fan, of course, and it also needs to be reflashed to regular BIOS. R9 380, good video card. And we'll talk more about specs, performance of these video cards in another video. But for today's video, we're actually going to be talking about what do you do when you get these video cards. Now, if we verify that these video cards uh, work and they're no longer under a manufacturer's warranty, like I said, that's another debate, the warranty, as this truck passed by. Okay, now that he's passed by. Um, if you verify that they work, they're no longer under manufacturer warranty, then the next thing you want to do is clean them up. Uh, we've talked about this, two things that actually hurt performance on these video cards, heat and old thermal paste. This video card was brand new in 2013, so this video card is already seven years old. If we take a look at this video card, let's see how well it gets in there. Got a lot of dust and crust in there. So if this is dusty and crusty, we can imagine what the thermal paste is going to look like. Cool thing about this video card is I guess they never took off the plastic sticker on it. I guess. I don't know. Never tampered with it. So, All right. So let's get back to cleaning this video card. There's a couple of tools that I typically like to use. And let me go grab them real quick. Oh, here they are. Okay. First thing I like to use, alcohol. Alcohol works great. 91%. Toothpick, um, Q-tips, a toothpick, thermal paste, whatever you decide to use, it's up to you. Um, some are better than the others, but this is what I have, and it's fine for this video card. And shop towels. You can use um, coffee, people, uh, people use coffee filters, that's something that they use. Some people use paper towels. I like the shop towels. I work on cars, and this is always around my garage, so that's one thing you're going to need. And then you're also going to need a small tool kit. Tool kit. Uh, I know iFixit makes one, but I'm cheap and I ain't got money like that. I got this one on Walmart for like $15, I think. I don't know, something like that. So, all right, so the first thing you want to do with these video cards is um, I take them apart. Okay? Take a look at the screws, see what's on there, and see what you can get out. So, you got the four screws on the back. I'm going to go ahead and pop these out real quick. Now, another thing to use magnetic. Screw holders, keep your screws in place. I am clumsy and I drop things all the time, so yeah. So let's get these screws out of here. Every video card is different. Some are gonna have a ton of screws, some are gonna have no screws. Um, yeah, so this is typically four screws and this bit is not the right bit for it, but we made it work. All right, so we pop this out. And the first thing you wanna do is carefully, carefully, carefully pry like that. And as you can see, we have it pried away. So that's typically what you're going to look for. Um, another thing to do is you see this connector over here. If I can get this in the video, right over here, if you see that connector right over there, those are hit or miss. I've actually, depending on how old the video card is, sometimes they come off really easy. Sometimes they come off really hard. Uh, typically, you could take a small flathead screwdriver or a pair of tweezers, and they come off. My rule of thumb is wiggle them back and forth nice and easy. Do not pull from the connectors. Look how small these wires are. You pull these wires off, you're going to break them off. So, yeah, don't do that. If we look at the thermal paste over here, see if I can get it in camera. I mean, it's just dry and very chalky. So this thermal paste, let's see if I can get one right over here. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, it's just like disintegrating. So this thermal paste has never been changed since this video card has had it. So um, what I usually like to do is I used to take a brush, okay? I mean, I get this for what? $87 at the cheap Harbor Freight. And, blow, and just wipe off all this dust, okay? You can use can of compressed air too, but some of it's actually caked on there pretty good. So this will actually help just break it off. Doesn't damage it, it's not gonna scratch it or anything like that. So this is something that I like to do. And as you can see, it looks a lot better already and it's already taken off some of that thermal paste. Um, another thing I do too is, so you're not reusing the dust, take your towel, 
And after you dust it, clean it off. Let's go to the back of the card. Right over here. And just get all that dust off. Okay. Pretty simple. <clears throat> so now that we had that off, next thing I like to do, and to see if it comes out in the camera, drop my screwdriver. <clears throat> next thing I like to do is I like to get this thermal paste right over here and just wipe it off with this Q-tip. Just kind of break it out. If you use the alcohol right away, it kind of smears it and kind of makes it a little more, I guess, pliable. I don't know what the word would be for that. But yeah, just get that off. I like to take a toothpick. You don't have to do this, but I'm OCD. And just kind of give rid of that little extra stuff right over there. Let's see if it comes in right over there. Yeah, just get a little bit of extra stuff. It's not the end of the world if you don't get it on the outside. It's mostly on the core that you want to get it off of. So once you've done that, brush off any excess. I like to use the compressed air. I usually have my compressor, but my kid's asleep. I don't want to wake her up. And just blow all that out. Get into the connectors. All right, and we've gotten all that crap out, so that actually helps out pretty good. And if you're gonna buy used video cards, this is what you're gonna need to do. I mean, you can't just buy a used video card, well, depending on how old it is, and just pop it in there, expect a great performance. What you need to do is you need to clean it up. So next thing we're gonna do, take the alcohol, put some on this shop towel, and just go ahead and wipe off, wipe down the core, clean it up real good. Okay, real simple, easy. Make sure it's dry, the alcohol will dry itself out. We're good to go. All right, so now that we got the actual card done, we actually have to clean off the heat sink. So this heat sink is pretty gross. And as you can see, the thermal paste, like I said, it's just dissolving, coming right off. Yeah, so that's not good. So we'll clean this off real quick. I'm not gonna bore you with the boring details on that. And then we're gonna take my can of compressed air. We're gonna clean all this junk out. And then uh, we'll be right back, putting it back together. All right, so we got it cleaned up pretty good. Got all the old thermal paste out. Blew all the dust out of it using these can of compressed airs. I'm not a big fan of using them. Actually, if you have like a garage compressor or a small type compressor, use them. Cause these things after a while, once they get cold and they have some warmers for these, they become useless. I mean, this thing, I mean, I could blow air out my mouth harder than that could. So just something to think about when you're doing this, but they work about five, $6 Walmart, Best Buy, whoever. So I got that done. So now this video card has never been peeled. So we're going to go ahead and peel that. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. And let's get this one off. So do you have to peel those off? No, but why not? I don't know if you can see that. That's kind of yellow. Um, after cleaning this, I think the guy who had this before me was a smoker. I mean, nothing against smokers. That's their preference. But um, the fact that everything comes off yellow was kind of gross and disgusting. So, But anyways, so now that it's done, something that you can do that I typically do just to kind of dress things up a little bit, WD-40. No, I'm not going to spray it on the board. Um, well, well, I don't know where that came from. I'm not gonna spray it on the board. Uh, mixed reviews on that. I've had mixed experiences on that. But something I like to do is I like to take the spray, spray it on a shop towel, and then what I do is I just wipe the plastic. And I do this on um, any type of plastic trim for cases, especially uh, computers that I'm selling. This is a real cool little trick. And they actually do this on cars, believe it or not. And just kind of wipe it. I mean, you don't have to go super heavy with the WD-40, but you know, if you wipe it and everything, it actually leaves a nice shine on it. And as you can see, I don't know if that gets in there, but it's actually shining up pretty nice. So that's something I do. I mean, if I'm selling these things, I want them to really look real nice, especially like if I'm gonna do a vertical mount with this GPU, which I don't know what I'm doing with this computer, but um, or with this video card for that matter. But if I was gonna sell it and I wanted to feature it, I would actually do it like this. 
And even if I wasn't, even if it was just sitting upside down like that, I would still do this because, I mean, it just looks really nice, cleans it up really good. I mean, some people have said they've used it on motherboards and everything. I don't know. I've done it on electronics. Sometimes it's worked. Sometimes it's improved things. And other times, all of a sudden, things don't want to work. So, um, yeah. But anyways, so I got that cleaned up. That's nice. That's ready to go. So after you have that all done, the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead, take our thermal paste, whatever you decide to use. I usually use the thermal grizzly, but I'm out, and this is all I have lying around, and I don't feel like going to any local store to pick it up. Just, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Everybody has their own methods of applying it. However you apply it works for you, but I've learned you cannot put too much on it. I mean, you don't want to go super snot crazy, but... You can put enough on it. Um, I usually put a good glob in there and then the excess, I just kind of rub it around. And don't forget, because I've done this many a times, and this is where it gets a little annoying because the EVGA made this super tight. Don't forget to plug your connector in. So, all right, that wasn't too bad. Once you have that in, let's make them together. Real quick, before I get into that, just something I want to talk about, and I forgot. So over here, I think the, I figure what these are called, VRM, MOSFETs, whatever they're called. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, this, I've never changed them. I don't, especially on old video cards. If they're still gooey and pliable and gummy like this one is, I don't change them, these uh, thermal pads over here. But if this would have broken off completely and it would have just been really hard and everything, I'd go ahead and change them. So check it see if it's very pliable if it's very gummy i've never had these go bad i've never had issues just reusing them like this one is pretty real good if it's pliable and it feels still gummy feels good reuse it if it's not um change it but my rule of thumb leave it alone unless it's like dried up hard brittle or it's completely broken so that's my rant on that so going back to what we're talking about let's go ahead and get this in and we'll line up our screws Make sure everything's sitting and touching like it should. Okay. Got our screws back in here. I probably should change the bit out, but it's fine. What I usually do is I just kind of put them in tight, not tight, but I just kind of start them. Just kind of help that spread a little bit. And then once I have them all started, if I have to wiggle and adjust, you can adjust. If you start tightening one right away and the holes are not lining up, then yeah, it won't work. So just go ahead and just start them. Make sure everything kind of sits and adjusts. And I kind of do this to kind of help spread out that thermal paste a lot better. Just give it snug. Don't go gorilla crazy on it. Nice and easy simple there we go done now we have a new video card I just go ahead and wipe this thing off because now it's a little dusty you're good to go so very simple so when buying use a video card just to recap and we'll close up this video real quick uh, some of the things shop towels or you can use um, coffee filters I've used paper towels before, but I'm not a fan of it. Shop towels work great. I keep them around the garage because I do a lot of automotive work. Q-tips to kind of get, you know, get off that extra stuff that you don't want. These work really good at clean things up. Alcohol, a brush to brush everything off. This you don't have to use, but if you're clumsy like me, go ahead and use it so you don't lose your screws all over the place. A good small screwdriver works real great. Clean it up, and you should have no issues. And honestly, if, uh, when I plug this video card in, I've already tested and benched it. Um, I'll probably get more performance, and I'll get higher clocks on it. So, I mean, can it be this a performance upgrade for an old video card? Yeah, this will be a performance upgrade because you're actually, not a performance upgrade, but you're actually bringing it back to, like, new settings. So, fresh normal pace is going to make a good difference on it. So, that's something to keep in mind. And you might be able to get better clocks on it. Who knows? And if you put good th uh, thermal paste on it, uh, some guys use thermal grizzly. Uh, the one I like to use is the cryonaut, conductor knot, one of those two is the pace, whatever the one it is. And that one's actually worked good, but all I had was that other one, which I don't know what to do with it. There you go. Cooler master. So that works really good. So yeah, 
I mean, that's how you pretty much refurbish these old video cards. Pop them in, you're good to go, and whoever uses them probably get a couple more good years on out of it. So even though this is a GT 760, still a good performing video card. Um, our next video in the series that I'm going to be talking about is actually popping these video cards in. I have an R9 380 that I've already refurbished and cleaned up. And we're going to see if they're actually any good in 2020. I mean, these $40 to $60 video cards. So comment down below. Let me know what you think. Um, methods, things you've done better, your personal stories, or just... I don't know, better ways you think you can do it. I'm always open to ideas, suggestions, and improvements. So, yeah, like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll see what we'll come up with next.